Okay, so we previously stated that uh, proteins were polymers of amino acids, but before they get big enough uh, to be called proteins, they're called um, peptides. So these are uh, proteins, or excuse me, amino acids linked up together. A small amount of amino acids linked together. So let's clarify that. So anywhere from two to say a hundred would be considered a peptide. Okay, and so how do amino acids link up? So uh, let's take a look at them. So let's have, we have one amino acid here, and it could be any amino acid, so we'll use the R group um, designation, and then we've got the carboxylic acid group. And it might link up with another amino acid. So we've got the amine group, we'll call this a different amino acid, so we'll call it R prime to indicate that it could be the same amino acid or it could be different. And we've got the carboxylic acid. So the uh, peptides are going to form linkages or form bonds in basically the same way that we made uh, fatty acids or triacylglycerols with fatty acids and glycerol. Uh, the water is going to be removed. A water molecule is going to be removed and these two peptides will be joined in essentially a condensation reaction. All right, so we've got the green amino acid, whatever that is now, linked up to the purple amino acid, whatever amino acid that is. And then, of course, this, carb this uh, amino acid could link up with another one and so on and so forth and this keeps on going until we have large peptides and then of course even proteins so waters are removed from that uh, this is this linkage is called the peptide bond and if you notice it's actually an amide linkage uh, the carbonyl bonded to a nitrogen so when you make peptides and even eventually uh, proteins you're always going to have one and that is an amine several peptide bonds linking all of the amino acids and at the other end you're going to have the carboxylic acid group and so oftentimes you'll hear the amine end of the protein or peptide called the n terminus and the uh, carboxylic acid end of the peptide or protein called the c terminus and as i said these can link up to many more amino acids and eventually build uh, proteins. And once a protein is formed, uh, it takes on a very specific uh, structure based on a variety of possibilities. So let's discuss that now. Okay, so there are four uh, stages or four different structures to um, proteins. Uh, the primary structure uh, is the amino acid sequence. So if you just take a look at just the amino acids that are linked up together, and we could use the one letter abbreviation, so an alanine, uh, linked up with uh, proline, then maybe a serine, valine, uh, glutamine, uh, isoleucine, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, that primary amino acid sequence is the primary structure. The uh, secondary structure of amino acids are two... Um, very um, sort of important structures, I guess I'll say, uh, alpha helixes, alpha helix, and a beta sheet. And these are formed 
by hydrogen bonding between the carbonyl and the hydrogens of the amine. So the partial negative charge on the carbonyl and the partial positive charge on any amine uh, on the uh, amino acid sequence forms very uh, specific alpha helixes or beta sheets in the protein. And then the uh, tertiary structure is uh, the overall three-dimensional shape. And I'll draw just squiggly lines to indicate a protein. So the proteins can form very specific um, three-dimensional shapes in your body based on intermolecular forces, um, covalent bonds between sulfides on uh, amino acids. So these are called disulfide linkages. and what are known as salt bridges between ionized carboxylic acids or amine groups. So intermolecular forces, which can include uh, hydrophilic interactions between polar R groups or hydrophobic interactions between nonpolar hydrophobic Hydro, uh, hydrophobic uh, interactions between nonpolar uh, R groups, uh, disulfide linkages between uh, amino acids that have sulfur in their R group, and then of course uh, salt bridges. So this would be the uh, first run on an individual protein. It's first built by its uh, initial amino acid sequence, then that may form alpha and beta sheets by hydrogen bonding, then, in turn, the overall three-dimensional shape is dictated by both intermolecular forces, disulfide linkages, as well as salt bridges. And then, of course, uh, proteins can interact with other proteins to form what we call quaternary structure, where two or more proteins, here's one squiggly line to represent a protein, we'll call this protein A, can form a protein complex based on intermolecular forces and um, other processes similar to the tertiary structure with a second protein called protein B. And this, of course, would be a protein complex. Okay, so to review, the primary structure is the amino acid sequence of a protein, which can form, uh, then forms uh, alpha and beta, uh, alpha helixes uh, and beta sheets by hydrogen bonding. Uh, intermolecular forces, disulfide linkages, and salt bridges lead to the overall three-dimensional structure or tertiary structure. And then two or more proteins can form complexes in what are known as quaternary structures of the biologically active protein.